Hi everyone, it's Lori, and today's episode, I wanted to share with you two techniques that I have learned in the past couple weeks, and I thought it was important to share them with you guys in our community. So these are regarding Photoshop's generative fill, and it's two kind of tricks to using the generative fill that I think are really helpful and useful. Now, I know everybody has opinions about generative fill and a lot of, you know, if you submit your work to camera clubs or galleries, they may not allow it. However, for personal use, uh, maybe you're gonna print something, it can come in handy. So it's important to know the, the tools that we have available. And I wanted to give you two ways to use this tool to make it even better. So let's jump in with this first image. Now, if you are not using Photoshop or you are new to using the generative fill, you're gonna see how easy it is. So even non-Photoshop users, um, you're gonna be able to do this, I promise. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just make this background a layer. And um, I want to expand the bottom of this image. I wasn't able to get enough foreground and get all of the mountain range. So to do that, you guys know how to do this. You just click your crop tool. Immediately, your toolbar will pop up. Now, if you don't see your toolbar, you go up to window and it's all the way at the bottom. Contextual taskbar. All right, once you have that, you can move this around. So if it gets in your way, I leave it here since I'm teaching, but you can move it around. Let's just slide it down a little bit. So what I wanna do is expand this canvas. Now, we've done this in Photoshop for years, and what we used to do is um, we would um, come up here and do content aware. Now, what I wanna do this time is I'm going to do generative expand. So I do find it helpful to go ahead and select that. Now, once it's down here, I'm not gonna put in a prompt, I just wanna say generate. All right, so we're gonna give it just a shot to see what it does. Now, here's where the first tip comes in. This is a very large image. It's 7,000 by something. Um, I shot it on a higher pixel image, and what you have to know is generative fill can only do, I think it's maybe a max of 2,000 pixels. So when we select this entire image, it is gonna be more than that. So let's come in and look. There's the first one. There's the second. I don't like that one, I'm gonna trash it. And there's the third. So I'm not sure if you can tell on screen, but what are you noticing? Well, the first thing I notice is kind of a line and I notice it's just blurry, there is no detail. So if you're using the program and you get that, you may be frustrated and you may think, well, this isn't working um, and you don't continue to use it. So I wanna show you another way to use this tool. It does take a little more work, but I can promise it is worth it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trash these. If you don't trash them, they do save, um, not necessarily say, but they do take up space. Um, so you just wanna go ahead and get rid of them. All right, so what we're gonna do is we've already expanded it. And so I'm gonna go up and make this the transparent default. And now instead of doing the entire image at once, we're gonna go grab our marquee tool and we're just gonna take a section at a time. And you can do a pretty decent section so I'm just gonna come around and grab that and then click Generative Fill and Generate. So what we're doing now is we're doing less than 2,000 pixels at a time and it's hopefully gonna match a whole lot better than doing a huge image. Now, if this was a smaller image, it might be a little bit different. All right, so we're gonna see if it, if it does a little bit better. There's option one. No, I don't like option two. And option three is okay. So I do see more detail over here than before. And this is a little messy, which um, kind of resembles the image. This has also got some detail. So I think for my preference, I think I'm actually gonna go with three. 
Now let's go over and do this section of the image, which definitely had a lot more detail than the center. And I'm just gonna copy that, generative fill, and generate. Now I've done this with some images where the foreground was really in focus, um, and it definitely um, made a big difference. So let's look at it with this one. It also speeds it up. Oh, interesting. So it's given us a little, that definitely looks more realistic. Oh, much more detail than the first image. I don't know if you guys can remember, but wow, what a difference on this side where there is more uh, pixels in focus. And that one I don't like as much. So I think number three I would get rid of. Number two is probably pretty close. Number one is interesting with that plant which does match the rest of the scene. So that's interesting. And then you have option two, which still has a little bit, maybe a little bit of a line, but I think I'm just gonna go with option two. And so then we could continue to work through our image. And the bottom line is, it is gonna just give you a much sharper, um, sharper detail in whatever you are copying. So same difference if I was going to do the side of the image to expand it a little bit. This works really great if you are doing a flower image. So let's say you've got a flower with petals and you really want to keep all the detail, then just do it in small increments. So you just grab that marquee tool and then generative fill, generate, and it's just going to give you a better match. So I hope this is helpful. I know me personally, I was using it on large images and wasn't having a lot of success. And once I learned this tool, actually learned it at Adobe Max, I was like, oh, that makes complete sense. So um, it's not going to be perfect every time. Sometimes I may still prefer to use the clone tool, but um, it's definitely better than the other option. And you can always tell it to generate again. So um, for this one, I'm gonna generate a second time and see if it gets, gets a better selection. Um, yeah, so that was that's our first lesson for today. The second one involves two images where you are gonna merge two images maybe together. So let's jump over and I'm gonna get out of this one. I've got this image. And I have this image. They were taken at the same day at the same location. And what I want to do is have this image connected to this image here. But I'm going to need to add, they don't exactly line up. It's not like a stitched image that I shot that way. I actually shot these separate, but I thought it would be really nice to put them together and have a larger scene of this beautiful area. So I just wanna show you some examples of how to do this. Now this tool is gonna to work very similar to what we did before, except it's using two images. And again, you may use this to stitch together an image. You may use it for a composite. You may use it to create something really abstract and interesting. So I think it's a handy tool and I think it's one you should have in your back pocket or your editing pocket. Okay, so the first step, these are just a couple steps to do this. So you're going to unlock your background layer. You wanna make sure it says layer zero and that it is unlocked. That way, what we're gonna do is grab our move tool and we're just going to slide the image off the transparency, so off the layer, okay? Then we're going to go to our second image, there it is, and we're going to grab the move tool and we're just going to slide this on to our scene. Okay, now I'm going to scroll this down a little bit to get it in line and I'm going to move it over and click or just um, come off of, let it process basically. So click off the screen so that your move tool stops working. The next step, now that you've got your image in, your second image is over here, okay? So it hasn't gone anywhere, but you need to be able to see it. So we have to go to Image Reveal All. Now, I'm gonna slide over, we can see both images. Now, they're not in the right order, but that's okay. I'm just gonna slide them over so you can change your mind, move them around, 
and I'm gonna stretch them out because I do, I do like the size that they were. If, if your transparency is bigger than your image, you don't need to worry about that. So I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit and bring that over. Okay, now I wanna make sure this image is um, sized appropriately for the tree. And I think what I wanna do is bring this in and let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. I think those trees look about the same size. Maybe make it a little smaller. We wanna make sure the water's lined up. So that's the tricky part. You do have to think about all those factors. And I think this tree looks pretty equivalent to that one. Okay, so now we've got this space in the middle. You can make this space as big or as little as you like, okay? So I've got everything lined up pretty similar. So I'm gonna just come off of the image again. And what we're gonna do is grab our marquee tool, just like we did before. And I'm gonna start by doing the entire scene but again, you could do this in small sections, so it's up to you. Now click that generative fill, click generate, and we are going to get a seamless image in just a minute. Now it will give us three options, and if you don't like those, you can always reprocess it. Um, so we'll give it a second to see. So again, you could use this to stitch together an image where maybe, maybe something was distracting and you couldn't shoot it, there were people, or you wanna do a composite, um, or you wanna just do kind of something fun. All right, so that image, that's not too bad. It's still got the reflection. Um, that one's not bad. Oh, that one's not good at all. So we're gonna turn that one off. This one's not bad, and then we've got this first one, that's definitely not gonna work. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that one, but I'm gonna go ahead and click Generate again. And let's see if we get anything any better. I think this might be our best option. Already, I'm really liking it. Now we could come in and also do a generative fill here, or I could just clone this. Either way, it's to me, it's kind of using the same technique. Either I clone it or um, I um, use the AI. Okay, so this I like much better. So it's got not as ugly of a, um, a brush, that's not bad because it's clean. I could always clone this out. And I don't like that. That's just giving me things that weren't in the scene. So I'm gonna delete that one. And that was the original. So I think if we go back, that's got the reflection pretty nice. I think this is going to be the one. Yeah, I think that's a really nice job. I can do some cleanup in the image but overall, I am um, I'm really happy with that. So now at this point, I would go ahead and do a stamped layer, Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E. And then I could work on cropping the image so I can come in. And depending on what I want with this bottom, um, I'm gonna just kind of bring it up, click Enter, and then I'm going to grab the clone tool and just fix this bottom edge. So let's come in, grab that clone tool, and then make it smaller. Always check your brush, make sure it's at 100%. And I am just going to clone that all the way over and over here. I think there was a little sky, so I'm just gonna clone the top, clean that up, and then I'm just gonna check the image. So I'm just gonna go through and do any other cleanup that I wanna do. Um, I think there's just some small, small little bits of stuff in the water that I'm just gonna clean up just to make that water really smooth and pretty. They were already in the image, so it's not like that was from the AI program or generative, but um, just a little cleanup, but I am really happy if you look at um, the addition of this and how it comes around. This is exactly how the lake looks. Now, if I wanted, here would be another step. I could expand this side just a little bit, click it again, and let's see if it will complete this tree for me. I don't think I have an image with that. 
um, but we can see what it does. And again, it's just another fun technique using this tool. So I know not everybody likes using this where it generates it for you. Again, I would not sell this image. This would just be for personal use or to print. Um, if I did use it, I would of course disclose that I had used the image. So, you know, that's not bad. Just adding another tree element right there versus the end. So um, I could keep that one. I think that helps kind of tell the story and balance the colors as well. So let me um, tell it to be done here. And I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you can see how fun it was to kind of stitch this together. And I'm sure there are other ways to use the um, thinking about putting two images together, or you could do even more than two if you wanted to. So that's going to do it for today, you guys. Just something that I had learned from Adobe Max, and I thought I would share it with you guys.